type of pressure that's on him right now, but he's come out on top here. Yeah, well, he time. always finds a way to get to the top of the hill. Absolutely. We'll see what the bands are coming out as we start this series. We just had a crazy five game set going on between Fusion and Team Dignitas, so we'll see what these guys now have for each other. There's going to be very different bands here. It's very top centric, mm -hmm. this matchup, because Avalon has a little bit of a disadvantage against Seraph if we're going by track record and in terms of play style. Seraph yep. likes to take over the game and just dictate the pace from that lane. And we heard Zion talking about TP Smite is going to be the way to go. Shivana immediately off the field. Yeah, and if we saw the way that Winter Fox was kind of using Avalon's position in the top lane, it was more of a Dyrus esque support player, something consistent, a Lulu, a Scion, a Maokai, something he can just be a beast on. So we'll see if that... Uh, organization with Helios, the jungler in the top laner, will come to be for Winter Fox here. Gragas quickly picked up for Kez in the jungle. We've seen him before. Coming from Cloud9 Tempest over to Complexity and the likes. Now here with TDK. He's one of their shot callers picking up Gragas. And Kez has improved a lot since we last saw him in the LCS. Yes. He was playing pretty much Elise and then he wasn't having yeah, all that. That's true. He wasn't having early game pressure unless he was on Evelyn. And now he's kind of gone to, he's played the Nidalee, he's played mm -hmm. the poke comps. He was the late game shot caller around objectives with the whole 80 minute right. complexity dream. And now he's had a more proactive yeah. style and Gragas is gonna fit him perfectly for that. That new new band, very nice against Helios if all of those have kind of quickly gone away. Both teams knowing what they want to take away from each other here. And like we said, a little bit of that top lane and the junglers getting that pressure as well. Urgot, nobody wants to see Alex with that. Yeah, yeah, especially since he can dominate the mid lane, and that's the second carry on TDK. Yep. And exactly. something interesting, something interesting to note is we give them side selection on what side they want to play. If you are the higher seeded team, we mm -hmm. give you games one, three, and five. If you're the lower seeded, you get two and four. Everybody chose red side <laughs> for every game, so everybody wants that last counter pick. It's so pivotal. It really helps out. And you have multiple times, even in the past games we just saw the series, the best of five series uh, we just watched, it goes to different positions, right? Sometimes the AD carry is the one to protect, figure out which one will be best at the end. Sometimes the mid laner wants it, right? And Shifter would be the one or yep. who he. My, my guess is it's going to be you get yourself something in that mid lane for Winter Fox, and then for TDK, yep. it's either mid lane or top, depending on what's left open. Because they want a priority pick if it's left for them, like the Shivana, but the Mundo yep. top. That's something you can also run TP Smite on. And, and it's <laughs> Very true, true, you can. And Seraph has played a lot of Mundo. He had amazing performances yep. on it. He played it alongside poke comps typically before, back when Kyle was playing Jace yep. on the team. Like you were saying, he's done the NAR TP Smite too. Exactly. So. He just tries to take over the game. The NAR yep. TP Smite, when he was playing its enemy in the finals on this stage, was actually a really good performance. And you don't see a lot of NAR TP Smite. He was just trying something out and it worked. Sometimes you get in the head of your enemy right now, the skirmish squad. It looks like TDK is putting together here, able to fight for quite a bit and do it with a good amount of speed. We'll see how Winter Fox can control that so far. Good kiting ability here, good protection and safety in that Maokai. A nice pickup in Nautilus and the Rek'Sai as well. See Helios going to try to go a little aggressive this game and see what kind of pressure he can produce with that Rek'Sai pickup. That's a really good bottom lane right there. A lot of early game pressure from the Nautilus mm. combined with the Callista. Uh, waiting on what they lock in for TDK support, but the Mundo into Callista. Callista has a hard time killing hefty tanks like Mundo. Yeah. He's going to get himself a thorn mail. He's going to have so much regeneration up in her face. And the problem is you don't build crit on Callista typically from the builds mm. we've seen. We have seen IE typical builds. They do it a lot in Korea. Right. Here it hasn't been as popular or as prevalent. So killing this Mundo is going to be a big task if he gets ahead. And that's the worry here, is that TDK might be able to expose that top lane of Avalon and get a snowballed advantage from there that then Altec has to deal with. The, the caveat is Winter Fox can lane swap it and then put right. Altec up against Seraph, keep him on lock, but then it's up to how good is Alex Siege now and can he stand up against Pole Belter in the mid lane? That's true. I like that mid lane matchup. I feel like it's like the Clint Eastwood to the young person, and he's like, get off my lawn. This is my lawn. You can't be on this grass. Get off my it's, lawn. It's the old veteran versus the now now older. I remember when Paul Belter actually wasn't old enough to compete. In that's events. how things work. People get old. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's going to be such a great matchup in the mid lane and really going toe to toe for those guys. It'll be something we'll keep an eye on throughout the entire time. And it, it does look like 
with the last ban, they do give it over to, or pick rather, to Poe Belzer for that counter. After seeing now the Corky and the Morgana being picked up, looks like we are going to get Alex each on a Corky in the mid lane. Yep, Corky mid. Trinity Force into Luden's Echo. We'll see what mm -hmm. he does. If he does end up going for an AD build or an AP build at that kind of uh, divide, where he ends up going with it. But that's the thing is this is not a champion that if you thought Alex Siege a couple years ago, you would never think Corky mid, even if it was a meta pick. <laughs> no, it would have been Galio, Rise, or Mordecai. <laughs> <laughs> but then when he was really known for his Kha'Zix, he was known for his Assassin, yeah. play, his Zed, oh. those champions aren't as good right now in the right. meta. So he has to pick things up like this. And that's the test here as well for Alex is, has he adjusted to this meta? He struggled with it when he was in Europe in the Challenger series. And now mm -hmm. he's up against Pobelter, who's comfortable playing an assassin into that. A lot of the times we'll hear some of these high profile and players that we've seen at the top of the list. We even saw High say it recently, if they ever take a bit of a break or a hiatus, that the meta leaves them and they're not able to catch up again. And sometimes that's what players face. Right now we're gonna see if everybody has gotten everything under control here coming out of the Challenger series and now trying to keep themselves in the LCS. Winter Fox is about to face off against TDK this matchup. I think both teams now out of Champion Select have gotten pretty much what they wanted. The bans were very fast and the picks slow, but it looks like everybody's got some good comfort champions. As the teams take to the Rift now, remember to share who you think is going to be taking this series, guys. It is always that portion of the time where you guys have to vote on to Twitter. So remember to send your hashtag TDKWin or hashtag WinterFoxWin to at LOL Esports, and we'll tally those up throughout the games. As always, I'm sure the coaches are always now fidgety as they get to the backstage or like, I can't do anything. I've said my last words. It's now up to the team. You always hear that about parents watching their kids play sports. I wish I could do this. I wish I could do this. <laughs> but it's all over once they get on the field. It's all up to the training they've had coming into this game. Let's see if TDK can get themselves in the LCS, and let's see if Winter Fox can prevent that from happening, keep themselves alive. The last time that we saw Winter Fox, or at least TDK, on this stage, Smoothie, the guy who had no LAN experience, no, was really, really excited to get here, no professional play before this, performed extraordinarily well for a yeah. rookie on the stage. And now he's back, and I want to see if he steps up. And now TDK, they were typically a team that was speaking Korean to each other. Kyle, Serif, Kez, and Louis GG all communicating in Korean with Smoothie being the guy left out. He ended up being a huge asset for them in shot calling. And now the team is speaking English with Alex in the Mitch. And Louis, and Louis GG is the yeah. one who is left out. It's something that you, you kind of consider, I would say, as somebody who isn't constantly listening to team comms and whatnot. You're like, why can't it just be a few words that they know? You know, it's Ward, it's Ping, it's MIA. <laughs> And it seems that, you know, once the teams find out what they want to use, that's the way it needs to happen. It's not as easy as just saying it. We've seen the communication be real trouble for teams throughout this season. And we also saw a lot of roster swaps back and forth. Winter Fox now kind of controlling this team for at least the past few months. They've had some time off here to work with it. So hopefully we'll see that this composition itself has to come together and their communication is now there as well. And I'm looking at the team compositions. Winter Fox mm -hmm. has drafted a little bit of a skirmishy composition here. Rek'Sai, Callista, Nautilus, yeah. all these guys really, really good. LeBlanc, great skirmishers, great two-on-two, -two, three-on-three mm -hmm. champions. And then TDKs really doesn't work unless they're all together. Right. It's an it's an AD carry kind of siege composition. Gragas will apply some wave clear on top of everything, but they need that wall. Seraph did take smite this game on Mundo. Yeah, he did. They're looking to group up. They're looking to split push 4-1 and then Siege with the AD carry, Siege with the wave clear. And the wave clear of Winter Fox isn't actually that good. That's the suffering part yep. here for them, is they're gonna have to ha get a Runan's Hurricane on Altec, and that's their main source of wave clear, aside from Pobelter jumping in and risking his body. Yeah, we well, do see that TDK made it top to freeze that wave. It did not happen that way for Altec and Gleeve in the bottom. They got there a little too late, so we'll see how they adjust to those. Smoothie getting in deep here to make sure he can get some early wards and maybe even a roam over towards the side of mid. But they do see him, so we should see Pole Belter staying safe here. And it is a lane swap, like you said. Yep. So Avalon is going to have an okay time. Seraph has the smite, so his jungle clear is fine. But once again, it's how self sufficient yep. is Alex on this champion without any jungle assistance for a long time against Pole Belter who so far has had, despite Winter Fox not having an amazing yep. season, Pole Belter's had consistent seasons of being a really good player. Mm -hmm. Ever since he got in the LCS, it's always like he's a good player 
It's just he's always struggling with what the team that he's on is just a little bit like coming together. Right. Like EG thrown into the mix. Everybody's still trying to come together. Mm -hmm. Now it's Winter Fox. All right, let's jumble everything up. Try to come together again. And the guy's just had to be in this spot many, many times. Absolutely. Back that, but he's always delivered. There's different, I feel, kind of things pulling at this team in games. Who's going to carry this one? Who's going to carry this one? And oh. Helios can sometimes fit that role, and Pole Belter sometimes can. And I think trading off of that hurts them a little bit in the organization of what they want to do. Having Pole Belter on the big, big threat this game, we'll see if they can keep that coordinated. Already putting great damage down to Alex Each in the mid lane. He brought some biscuits so he can keep that harass up nicely and just keep eating some cookies. And it's working. Right now, Alex Each getting his farm 19 to 18, but that harass is definitely going to make a gank a lot easier. May not see those ganks for too long. Well, actually, I lied because we'll get somewhat of a matchup towards the top lane, so the junglers may have some free time here. That's the solo city in mid. Is Pobelt are going to get a kill early? He's out of mana. He's just going for the autos. Oh. Ignite? Nope. Not enough. That's... That's what chugging a potion gets you. Alex Each stays alive, but the pressure now coming from Pole Belter in the mid lane. How are they going to relieve this one? He's up ahead now once he starts clearing these, and then he's going to be able to pressure the sideways. Helios already at the top side. Zyrene onto Smoothie. Not something they expected. They had this lane frozen and then started going completely aggressive without vision. Yeah, look at that squad, though. The Nautilus, the Maokai, the Rek'Sai. That's so much lockup for hitting a support, yeah. hitting an AD carry. This gank roaming squad that is full of skirmishers is so potent early on. Yep. Maokai point and click, that guy's dead. Easy, easy pick up there once they'd overextended. Already, that pink ward, four minutes allowing them to get in nice and quick. Kez had gotten the scuttle crab, but that was not Helios's path. So that first blood nicely goes to them and quite a gold lead there is. There were quite a few people involved in that situation. Yeah, and the presence of mind to buy that pink ward and place it down early around mm -hmm. your route so that you know you're not being scouted through there is really to the detriment of TDK, not warding it up. I was just about to say, where is TDK actually going to use theirs? Kaz with a very nice double deep place. He got one just behind Wolves with that pink. Actually, he's going in hard, and then he got a vision ward inside Wolves. So really trying to figure out where Helios is. Don't want him to be able to control more of that snowball for his lanes. And already... Got that ward down in the bottom lane to see him. Yeah, they see Helios here looking to affect the side lanes. Seraph is CSing decently well in this lane, but he's having a little bit of a harder time than yeah. Avalon, especially with that relief of pressure in the top lane. And that could be big, getting Avalon ahead so that he can deal or at least go even with Seraph in trades later on. Even with all these wards. Winter Fox is going to be able to get first dragon. TDK pretty much giving this one up. You see that Kez is heading towards that top side of the map. And I don't think TDK is really going to be able to work off this either. Usually you're kind of hoping something will fall your way, but it's not time for turrets or anything yet. You hope things fall your way, but you really have to set up for them. The team's not going to give you a whole yeah. lot off of them taking dragon. You have to set your waves up appropriately ahead of time. And it just wasn't done by TDK. TDK a little afraid in that top lane still. They don't have ward coverage over where that pink ward is. And then their bottom lane ward coverage actually expired before that. Uh, they do have Scuttle, though, I believe. Oh, wait, no, they have a ward off on the side. Yeah, it's just off on the side. Oh, I guess it was the Scuttle. It looks, just disappeared. It looks just like a ward on the mini-map. <laughs> <laughs> it's tricking you. It got me. Let's see what the build is here for Pole Balter. It looks like Morella Namicon is going to be his first item. Alex Heach is starting to get a little AP. After the fact, he definitely wants to be able to make sure he can take down Seraph. If he, if he starts to get big, he can cut through that and make sure he doesn't get his healing from the Grievous Wounds. Good move there for Pole Belter. Still stuck in the laning phase, however, and a nice push from Alex Ish will give him some time to back. Even with the pressure that Pole Belter put on him, good for Alex Ish to be staying alive in this situation. Bringing heal to the table as well. He knew it was going to be a tough fight. Yep, bringing heal to that mid lane on the core key. Allowed him to stay alive. If he didn't have it, he would have been dead. Yeah. Right. Top lane, though, they do shove it out. They do lane swap it back. So TDK, don't go positive off the lane swap. They end up going a little bit negative on it, and Winter Fox get more off of it. Altec ends up with a little more CS. Avalon ends up with a little more CS and a kill into the hands of Helios early. Despite him being down in CS, he's just been roaming around getting uh, some, right. some, uh, some kills to these laners setting them up. A lot of that early roaming from Smoothie towards the top side, it wasn't even really roaming. He just kind of entered the jungle, was seen. 
So Winter Fox wasn't really caught out by that knowledge. They could avoid it. They got what, everything they wanted out of it. And you're right, TDK has not really come up ahead on this swap. They kind of swapped with the intentions that that would really give them something, but nothing else was going with the swap. So they just got the swap. Yep. They got, Easy. <laughs> they got to be in different lanes. Yeah, there you while. go. That's all they got. That's all they got. It looks like they swapped it back again. And now they're trying to answer it. They're sending Louie to the top lane again. Alongside Smoothie yeah. for the two-on-two. -two. Dragon not on the table, so you don't need to be around there. But this is also, when you look at matchups, Morgana's pretty good into Nautilus. Mm -hmm. But Callista is renowned for doing phenomenally well against Sivir. Yet they still opt into it. You're looking at really no point-and-click stun against Altec if that lane gets a gank, so it's going to be very hard to take him down. And I believe the idea behind it is they just want Seraph in a lane where he can farm and be up against Avalon because he doesn't feel pressure from this laner and he wants to take over this lane. Yeah, very true. You see level 6. Oh, Fate's Call goes in and goes out onto Louie X. He's going to go and throw down the Spell Shield. Gets out safely. Altec cannot close enough ground with the passive moves. And it looks like Seraph is actually going to put himself in a bad spot. Oh, with the teleport. The Avalon comes in as well. Kez tries to break up the fight. Will they be able to get Seraph out alive? The ultimate keeps him alive. Yes, it does. And Altec actually goes down for the worse within that trade. What? Where did Altec? Okay. Wow. He ended up getting <laughs> destroyed at the end there by Kez. Just off of a barrel. That was... That was a really good play by Kez. The separation barrel there to save Seraph was absolutely crazy. Ah, he actually got killed by some minions there. So Kez uh, didn't fall off minions OP. Red. So good okay. push by uh, TDK and Kez to be in the right spot at the right time. There was a bit of a rotation from Alex and Pobelter in the mid lane, which caused them to fight, and now fighting again here. Alex has a bit of the upper hand. The buffs have worn off in the mid lane, and Pobelter is kind of without anything. He does have that flash. That's about all he had, and he is going to be able to juke it out alive. Very well played for a bit of a mistake. Back and forth, and you can see these two mid laners capitalizing off each other's tiny misplays. Yeah. He gets both summoner spells. Both misplays for sure. All, all summoner spells down in that mid lane right now. And this is just ruthless because whoever gets that small advantage over the other just cracks the game wide open because then you need jungle attention mid. You aren't pulling it towards your side lanes. And it just becomes this big kind of snowball Ooh. in the microcosm. Nice chunk of damage done by Avalon here in the bottom lane. Sarah forced to use that ultimate, and if he can get on him once again, Avalon could probably do push out of lane damage here and leave Seraph wanting to teleport back somewhere, which is down. Kaz again trying to provide in a pressured lane here, but Helios getting there just ahead of time. Nope. And Kaz just got that cooldown back up. Not afraid to use it. It's not too long. Yep, pouring out one for his homies there, making sure he doesn't get <laughs> locked up by Avalon. If Avalon had taken two steps forward, May have been able to land the root, so it was a good zoning ultimate there. Yeah, the fact he got that kill off of just a red buff hit on Altec was really big. And Kez's previous barrel, I want to jump back to that because it was just so good because it saved Seraph and it also set up the kill onto Altec. And if he can continue to land barrels yep. like that throughout the season, that's kind of, or, or throughout the series, it's something that you don't really bank on too hard. And we're going to see it again here. This is just so good. The black shield from Smoothie to save the root on Louie. Altec overextends. The TP comes in, and they're wrapping around. But here comes Kez from, from behind. They pull everything onto Seraph, and right there, Seraph gets locked up by the knockup oh, of Helios. Look at that. Boom. <laughs> pop, pop. The red buff tick, the W, took him down just enough. And that's why I was so confused that it happened because he was half HP last right. you saw him. Well, it looks like it might happen towards the top lane again. Helio's trying to now give some kills over the all tech, but I don't think he was ready for that. And it's forcing a flash there. Not something that you want to have happen. A bit of miscommunication there. Helios is going without the confirmation of the team once again. A little too hard, but that pressure says, Kez, we need to get out of here. Nope. Shoving the wave to the turret yeah. here. Alex is actually going to let some creeps die to this turret and get a CS advantage for himself over Poe Belter. 
So so good in the mid lane, or so far good in the mid lane, I should say. Like we were saying, Alex was pressured out, but he's doing okay. Kills towards Alltech in the top lane is exactly what Seraph wanted to get. He was saying him and Pole Belter are going to be a big factor for this team in CS, the KDA. Alltech's a machine at getting that CS, he said, and still with going down, he's up just oh. by about a wave. Both junglers in the top lane. They didn't see Helios with that. And they went aggro. Oh, Here's Kez. right past a shield on top of the black shield for Louis XGG. Keeps him alive. Helios oh. in a bad spot right now because of the moves from Kez. And he is again in the right spot at the right time. Smoothie got him with a binding, too. Yep. They saw. They didn't know that uh, Helios was up there. And they ended up thinking, this is the lane that has a turret that's almost mm -hmm. dead. We should be here first. And that's a advantage for TDK. They lose their bottom turret, though, just because Avalon has a CS advantage here, built off the lane swap, and Seraph's still trying to play catch-up. And Seraph may die. Glebe coming down just off the edge. He cuts the pie on any of the anchor toss there. But as Glebe gets around the corner, it's the depth charge. It's going to lock him up. This should be enough to take down Seraph. Oh, what? Avalon! What? Oh. <laughs> what is the team doing on the other side? They're going ahead and giving blue over to Alex each. And they're going to try to repair things up. Great move so far by Kez and the, just the team of TDK. The wards that he placed, that pink ward, and the, still, it was just walked by by Helios, right by Wolves, has continuously told them that Winter Fox isn't on the bottom side. Kez could be on the top for counter ganks, and baby, it's been working out. Yep, and this going to be the second dragon going over to Winter Fox off the vision and off the play on the bottom lane onto Seraph. He does have his TP, but by the time he comes up, it's going to be rendered away. And the big thing here is both junglers are prioritizing vision, and we're going to see so many wards this series because Kez, mm -hmm. he gets his sight stone before he even completes his Bami Cinder. And then Helios, he's just matching suit. He's also prioritizing that vision for his laners because right. Altec and Pobelt are the carries. This is not, uh, these are not teams that use their jungler to carry the game. They use them as vision bots and people who are going to set up their laners to just carry later on. Helios, you know, he does have some standout performances, though. I will say that. But as the meta has shifted more towards tank junglers, we're not going to see as many from him. What about seeing Essence Reavers from Louis XGG? Oh, man. <laughs> that is... <laughs> what? Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> it's going to be good. Okay, okay. So, Louis XGG, he was, uh, he was on Jin Air as a sub, and the first game he went in as Graves, he got a quadra kill and was named MVP of that, That's of that, true. Of that game. So, oh, MVP in Korea for one game. I don't know if I should question it, but I'm going to question it anyway, because <laughs> Essence Reaver, you know, that item is... Uh, so does that mean if he wins now, he gets MVP for Essence Reaver? It's not good, really. I don't know. He's 101. Not looking good, He's really. 101, well, and he is trying to get a lot of mana. He yeah. gets so much mana with a spell did, shield did you and see, an essence reaver. Did you, did you see him up top out of mana? He's fixed that issue. No, I didn't, because he, he has that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see if it works out for him. It kind of puts a hindrance on the damage there. Uh, it does give him a little bit of CDR, and if he's going yeah. for some poke, he's going for the Q damage. It's the same damage that he's going to get in the Siege uh, situation as you get from a Bloodthirster or as you get from an IE. Because yeah. it's 80 damage, yeah. no matter what. Turrets don't care about your crit. It's got 10% life steal, and That's it does true. give the him a That's true. The turret damage back. you got still. So it allows him to stay in Siege situations where he can continuously wave clear and shove Winter Fox in with their lack of wave. Clear. All right, we'll see if Louis XGG has the essence. See if he can do it. We're coming up on 17 minutes, only two to two. First few kills came from a few skirmishes in the top lane. Back and forth with the junglers being involved, so Helios and Kez definitely knowing that they have to get themselves in the right spots at the right time. And so far, Kez has been able to pull the team back into this one nicely. They're grouping up right now to try to punish the lack of wave clear and just shove waves out, keep things under control. There is a big yep. wave bottom that they need to catch, so they can't exactly group up in Siege just yet for TDK. And Winter Fox, they are, they're going to have to deal with this. But here's the thing is Altec, he realized he's not going to be able to shred through the window without the IE. Yeah. Let's talk about those builds where they aren't as common in North America. He's going to go for it here just so he can get through these tanks and have that crit chance. But it's going, usually when you get an IE, you don't get a Runance Hurricane because it doesn't offer you crit, which is multiplied by right, right. the IE. So he's going to be pretty much a single single target DPS source. A lot, very interesting to see how many different builds kind of yeah. a Callista can take. And really on her own choice, right? Yeah, he's not going to offer the wave clear either if he doesn't get a Runance hurt. Mm -hmm. This is a very low wave clear, catch you out skirmish composition from Winter Fox. And TDK is all siege. 
Winter Fox, a bit of wave clear. Siege team. Cobalt, we can get those distorts in. But not a whole lot. We'll see how they actually are able to take the approach to turrets here from TDK when that time comes. Two dragons so far to Winter Fox as Helios has been all over that. Something we've seen, you know, even during the LCS season. They were pretty... Pri they prioritized quite well, I should say. So they keep that going here throughout this tournament. See a little bit of pressure come back for Dragon in about five minutes. A little bit less here as Winter Fox tries to gather towards the mid lane. Interesting. Doesn't seem like they're going to get too much out of it. At TDK are going to have to play the rotation game pretty pretty well yeah. because they have to deal with the rec side coming up to waves. They have to be able to force turrets down and kind of capitalize off of bad back timers. So they can force people That's back. True. They'll be able to shove a turret very quickly. And Poe Belter is the main wave clear source. Oh, it's off on Dragon. It was yeah. two minutes. It's two minutes. Okay. Two minutes. It's even closer. That's what I like. We get the action out. See where these pink wards went. I just saw a ton in the inventory recently of Winter Fox, and they've actually put them on their side. More defensive than they've gone offensive here, so I guess it doesn't feel like they're ready to push forward and be able to defend those wards. Definitely telling of how they feel and what they want to get out of this next objective fight. The pink wards are sitting in the inventory of TDK, however, and they are placed defensively as well. And when you don't have vision of these areas due to those pink wards, you always have to take account of where Avalon is. He has the Righteous yeah. Glory completed. So if he's able to start the fight, TDK, they're going to have to kite backwards. Kez will have to barrel. But also, they may have to pop defensive ultimates. And you don't want to do that, especially when Dragon is a minute away. So everybody's still playing kind of safe. Nobody's going past River for TDK. Mm -hmm. And Winter Fox are all just trying to group up, trying to look for these opportunities where they can actually start these fights, and start these skirmishes. So now we've seen a few smite kind of TP junglers. Uh, toward, oh, actually, wait a minute. Yeah, top Could laner. actually have no initiation here. Okay. Uh, Didn't decide these Sivir alt. They were just going for the pressure. But I was going to say, we've seen a bunch of top laners kind of go with TP smite. Where is the spike for Mundo here? Is it kind of the same thing just when he completes it? Use him? How do they use the Mundo with this? Uh, Mundo takes a little more time to scale up than okay. most TP smite top laners. They get TP smite and they're like, oh, I can duel you and auto attack you to death. Right. Mundo, not so much. Mundo is around uh, a little bit further than Shivana because Shivana turns on after you get it and then have one right. more item. Mm -hmm. You can split push really easily. He needs one magic resist item and one uh, defensive armor item mm -hmm. as well to go along with it, to supplement it. Because then his re the fact that he's healing so much up right. while reducing your damage and he's not taking just even yeah, yeah. on top of it is really good for him. So that's round where he turns on. So it's going to be a while before Seraph hits those points. A lot of things to supplement. Or I say to complement, rather. Oh, good boomerang damage onto Poe Belter. He has blue, though, so he can definitely stay safe with some good distortions here. And the Mimic, if he needs it. Seraph coming in from the teleport Just over fight. the top side. Kaz with a very nice explosive cask. And I don't know if Poe Belter's going to be able to deal the damage he needs. All of Winter Fox is in retreat right now. TDK gets a great fight. Poe Belter tries to find the back line, and he actually positions nicely with Avalon, but there's still no re-entry. TDK, like you said, Kaz. Irene, is just staying in this death ball. You are not a able to get away from them if you're in the middle. That's a two for one, and TDK forced their ways in with the team fight composition. Yeah. Let's talk about how Alex is going to be pretty safe. Louis flashes forward <laughs> to get to Altec, and he's like, eat my essence, Reaver, man, because then <laughs> he did barely any damage, but he chipped away at him so, so long over that fight. And that's the sustained damage. The Sivir alongside the Mundo is going to be able to run people down so easily. Got it. Louis XGG is an amalgamation of Cutie Pie and Genja. He's just going to do his own thing. Oh, whoa! Another trendsetter. Whoa, smoothie! Not so smoothie. He goes down to Pole Belter there. Easily played. That He didn't even have vision in yeah. that brush itself. He played that through just being in the mind of smoothie after he walked on a ward. So smoothie actually sweeps the ward, doesn't leave. Right. And they don't see him leave. Or, like, right. they, they don't they see him go anywhere. Yeah. So Poe Belter assumes he's in there and just bops him. Sometimes when you assume correctly, it works out. Neither person is of such. Yeah. The flank from Seraph here, Glebe pops his ultimate off, and this is another good spell shield, black oh. shield from the bottom lane combo. But the depth charge does yeah. nothing. Everybody's so low now that they're trying to kite backwards. Poe Belter jumps in for Kez, and then Kez leaps away. He ends up going back in, which baits Seraph into turning. And he actually picks up Kez off of this with the flash W. Kez was pretty much safe there. Yeah. 
Alex Valking forward to get what he wanted. We'll have the push now towards the mid lane. Looks like Kaz is going to get those resistances on. Just be a beefcake to tank out the turret. So TDK now starts to group their five here. This is kind of what they were waiting for, the moment when they could do this. And they really, right now, have Winter Fox kind of in a different position. The wave is going to give Winter Fox a bit of time to get back here in mid, but it's still going to be damage to this turret. Yeah, this composition's weakness is wave clear on Winter Fox, and TDK right. have a huge wave clear composition. If they can just continue to clear out, and then Winter Fox has mm -hmm. a really hard time actually starting a fight afterwards. It's like their pressure of front end burst is what can push TDK yeah. off. That's yeah, about it. You have you to land it. Pole belts are going up. And as soon as Alex ends up getting his loot and Zeko, which is what he's going for second, mm -hmm. he's going to have a lot of poke damage that actually is meaningful. It's not just wave clear at that point. Yeah. One thing that's been really hard for Winter Fox is, like you're saying, everything's working for TDK. The black shields are stopping the depth charge. Kez's explosive casks have been on point in distributing the members of Winter Fox in the right spot to be killed by TDK. And Winter Fox just can't recuperate in these. And even before this, we heard Seraph talking about the CS machine Altec. Yeah. Luigi is ahead of him. He's been ahead of him pretty right. much all game long. He's beating the CS machine. And we talk, I talked about it a bunch when TDK was playing enemy in the finals. Mm -hmm. Louis GG has been getting exponentially better throughout this season. He was very uneventful at the start. And now he's actually come online and it's been really yep. strange to watch because usually you're like, okay, I have a read on how this guy's gonna play. And then Louis GG just comes out of nowhere. It's like a different tendency. Yeah, it's like a it's like a different person showing. <laughs> I want to go look at his match history, see if he's ever built Essence Reaver, and then copy his builds because they <laughs> seem to be working. It's like, I think this <laughs> is the game. I flipped the coin before we got in. This is the Essence Reaver game, and everybody said, okay. But the thing is, the team has to be on board with this as well, right? They're, they got to be cool with it. You're not you just, just like, tell them, dude, them. what did you buy? You, no, you're right? just like, I got my IE. Let's, let's fight, guys. <laughs> I got a new skin for my IE. Look at it. Alex going to pick up blue if it doesn't reset another time. It's, this is going to be a tough one. The Battle of the Blue. Alex wins. All right, moving on. He's going to have to get to the mid lane. Good tunnels here to keep an eye on from Helios. He can definitely get into a peculiar spot for Winter Fox and be trouble for TDK. This bottom lane is actually going to be very interesting. Altec is pushed up a little bit. He does have help, but oh, there's the binding. Oh, and on the soil as well. All the damage to come in as necessary. Altec goes down 0-3-1 in this game. This is huge for TDK. Winter Fox picked TDK, assuming they would have a That's mid lane, a good point. A mid lane and a bot lane advantage. Alex Siege is in for Kyle. That's yeah. completely foiled. And now Altec is 0-3, down 20 CS to Louis GG, who's 2-0-3 right now. And we saw the, the lane swap for TDK not actually work completely in their favor, right? Mm -hmm. They were somewhat able to repair that. I wouldn't say anybody had a gigantic lead coming out of what happened in the lane swap anyways, right? But we can say it didn't work out yeah. for a TDK. They came out very even, and they somehow have now started to find that lead make sure that Kaz is in the right spots at the right time. The dragon fights have been fantastic for them. And now, two to one in those. Only gonna have to be worried about that as we get to number four for Winter Fox. But right now, those dragons should be going in the favor of TDK from here on out. And we got one minute for the next one. And I can understand, talking about the lane swaps that you were talking about, the, the idea of lane swapping, because TDK, it's kind of been a weak point for them because Smoothie has no competitive experience, and it kind of showed yeah. when they got ganked through a pink ward top. He has no competitive experience, but he's having a really good time learning, and he's picked it up so quickly. This bottom lane is actually very surprising today. Mm -hmm. They are showing up. Definitely something that needed to happen for TDK. Was a glaring spot for some people to look at, as well as what would happen you know, with Alex in the mid lane. Would he be able to adjust with the team in, in a time? He, he's been a sub on the team, but it's not the same. We've, we saw what having a sub at an AD carry position kind of did for Keith and back and forth with Piglet. Subs don't always work out. Yeah, and it's something you can't rely on. You can't be like, Louie, you'll beat Altec by 20 CS in the game. It's kind of something that's being handed to them, and oh. this is handed to them too, Pole Belter. Oh boy, that's the clone. He gets out alive on oh. that one. Very, very scary stuff, but Alex still in Alex each form from the old days, ready to go in on the fights. Yeah, he is beating Poe Belter right now by CS. Poe Belter has not given up a kill, and they haven't given up huge advantage. 101, when you, they're both When great. you shove him out of the lane like that, and you're still healthy, you leave up the dragon, Seraph's got to TP into this. Oh, that wasn't even the smite to have it go down there. Helios Avalon's a little too far forward. They don't have Poe Belter. 
Helios isn't really helping on this side either. They're kind of just not worried about him. There's zero pressure to come from a few members of Winterfox, making the fight easier for TDK. A flash over the wall from Louis to get himself to safety and stay with the team. Great positioning here from TDK as Winterfox tries to clean up a late dragon fight, and now they are running for the hills. That's going to be four members of Winterfox oh. going down and a triple kill to Louis GG. The fact that Winter Fox were banking on Altec to be this machine yeah. for them, it is not working out this game. And Louis is just cleaning house with an Essence Reaver. Yep, we're seeing as well Seraph getting too big, going for that Warmogs first. No Pole Belter is going to be able to chunk him out immediately. So he is almost now not a target that can even be hit until he's the last guy standing. That's how it should be, but I'm sure Winter Fox is hoping they can clear out these TDK members faster than that. Baron. That is not the situation, Zyrene. Baron is going to be going over to TDK here just 28 and a half minutes into the game. They clean it up with no contest after that dragon fight. Very clean, easy Baron for them, too. Like you said, no contest. After picking up a dragon, Winterfox going to this. Povelter's not there yet. He's not there to jump in and give his damage. They take Avalon down to half, and then they ignore him. They go after Altec. That binding over the wall on the Callista, who's leaping around, and then Kez yeah. comes over for the finish. Seraph is still alive right now. He is running around and nobody can kill him. And then Altec <laughs> has to he get, lives. Avalon gets pushed out of the fight. Altec is dead. Their main source of damage is down. Poe Belter gets taken out. And TDK's yeah. target calling, their focus, is really good. Kez is blowing flashes. He's coming over the wall, yeah. throwing his cast just to get to Altec because they realize that is what they need to do to win these fights. And they're executing it. Phenomenally well. Ooh. And Seraph just jumps up to his spirit visage as well, making him pretty much unkillable yeah. at this point in the game, especially when he throws that ultimate on. Pole Belter doing what he can to he, pretty much squeeze clear. out the last drop of this turret. They can't clear these waves. It or this composition already sucks at wave clearing. They're not gonna kill these barren up minions, and Pole Belter's the only one who even stands a chance. Yeah. They're gonna lose an inhibitor off of this in trade for their tier two bottom. Real rough, because they have not, on the side of Winter Fox, broken the middle turret of TDK either. So that makes it very hard to switch to either lane on the map. You have to go all the way through the river or behind the buffs, and they are not getting anywhere too fast. We'll see what they can do to start repairing the bleeding here. Winter Fox maybe think about game two already, but there is still a chance that they can just kind of keep it going and hopefully get some more items in their pockets here. Yeah, it's 5k up, right? It's a tiny gold advantage, but that's lying to you right now if you're watching at home because the composition that's drafted for Winter Fox is going to have to deal with super minions for a long time. Right. TDK loves siege situations, and if you can siege a different lane, you're going to start having turrets fall into your hands, even more gold. Mm -hmm. This is going to jump up very soon to be around an 8k gold advantage oh. if they continue to take these outer turrets just off of rotation. Seraph, he doesn't have his TP just yet, and that's an opening for Winter yep. Fox to use their TP, but even when Seraph isn't there, this composition is still very strong right now. They'd have to capitalize on it with Burst, and look at that. Lock out of the Iron Solari already finished up for Kaz and Pole Belter, just kind of tickling him a little bit. It's really strange, too. They last picked this LeBlanc into an already tanky composition. Oh, very tanky, yeah. Right? LeBlanc cannot kill tanks, and that's why we don't see her so often. She goes after squishies. There's two squishies on this team. They're damage dealers on TDK. Mm -hmm. But Seraph, he's becoming a damage dealer with how long he lasts in these fights and challenging Smite. And you're not going to kill this window. He just heals so much, and he's prioritizing magic resistance yeah. and HP, Ooh. the hard counter still LeBlanc. Smoothie with Azanias as well on the Morgana already here. He's just like, I need a first core item. I'm not <laughs> even going to upgrade my Spell Thieves. Don't worry about it. Yeah, a lot of people don't go for the upgraded Spell Thieves. Right, or just sell it later. Yeah. Absolutely. They're like, I don't need that. <laughs> Gold generation, I'm getting enough from these kills. Great pressure here coming in. Alex Each also haunting guys a little while back that he threw in after he had some more money, more pen, more damage for him. And it looks like with the blue buff, they cannot do much. He also is sitting on a sorcery elixir to make it hurt that much more. And Winter Fox is kind of, I don't know, thinking they of what the they turret. can They're do. Starting. They're getting engaged on both sides now of the fight, getting flanked on one. And it looks like Louis GG is actually going to be okay in this 1v1 versus Helios. Going to get a little help here from Alex Ege as they start to clean up the fight and push Winter Fox out of their own base. What a dominating game one here coming out of TDK. Yeah, they have super minions in the mid lane, three members down. You're right, that's going to be game one going over to TDK. 32 and a half minutes. Yeah. Off the back of playing to their compositional strengths, they got an advantage not off the lane swap, nope. but off of just team fight play.
And there it is, 32-40 into the game. TDK take down Winter Fox for game one. And it's even more surprising that they got it off team fight play because they're using their sub. Yeah, absolutely. That communication has to be there for them the whole time. One thing that impressed me throughout that entire game one is you'll see these compositions come in with one goal, right? You have a Nidalee or a Zed or something and you want to poke or you want to split. And they'll do that for the beginning and then they group or they do something else and they stop because they have a lead. They grouped and they stayed grouped the entire time. They pushed down the mid lane and then stuck together again. They didn't go away from what they had initially planned. And that's, I feel, especially big for an up and coming team because it's easy to kind of let go of what you have once you have a lead. Yeah, and it looks like what they ended up doing on TDK's side was we know what we're going to yeah. do to win. We know our win conditions. We know what we have over them in terms of what our comp is strong at. Yeah. We'll wait for those spikes. We'll play it out there. And I know as strange as it sounds is Essence Reverse Spike, <laughs> but... Louis GG did 20,000 damage this game. We have the proof. And the next highest was Alex at 14,000. So that's a poke champion on Quirky. This guy's getting 20,000 yeah. damage off of Ricochets in team fights. That's how much they're team fighting. Had 100% kill participation on his Sivir. And the fact that he's able to spam the W every time it's on cooldown, he's never going to run out of mana throwing that down lanes. Yeah. He's going to get just a tiny bit of her ass off. But also the fact that he's clearing these waves on a non-wave clear composition was pretty much the story of this game because Winter Fox didn't get to dominate the lane phase. They didn't yeah. get to walk away from it with as big a lead as they thought they That's would. That's what Seraph said would be the big thing, right? Watch for Pobalter, watch for Alltech, the, the farming machine, who at one time was up about 10 CS, but as soon as the lanes started swapping back and forth, Winter Fox really wasn't able to control that too much. And while it should be something they're very aware of, as it happens all the time in the LCS. Yeah. I'm really happy that at the start I was like, wait a second, they have no wave clear. <laughs> what are they going to do against this comp late game? And... He even started building towards another BF sword item, so he may have actually ended up with an IE at the end of the day to get through their squishies even harder. So looking at this composition for Winter Fox now, knowing that kind of it, LeBlanc not being the problem, but also not being the one that could kill the tank, let's look at the last pick and say what else could they have done. Yeah, it depends on what he has in that champion pool, right? right? And now they aren't going to have the counter pick next game, so Pobuffs is going to have to dig a little deep for something. He's not the kind of guy who wants to play the Ziggs. He doesn't want to play the Zeref, yeah. right? He wants to play something that dominates the lane. Zed it has okay wave clear. You use your gap closer to do so, but against Alex, who loves Zed, I don't know if it's going to be the edge that they're going to be able to exploit. I well. think he's just going to try to kill him in lane. We'll see. It is a best of five series. Game one only makes things harder mentally here for Winter Fox, but they still obviously have a chance. Let's throw it right now over to our analyst.